When it comes to protecting your tech, there are plenty of things that likely come to mind. Phone cases, insurance plans, backups, there are a whole range, whole host of options that most people use to safeguard against damage and loss. But prevention is better than the cure, and one scenario that many of us neglect to consider is unexpected issues with your electricity supply. Depending on where you live, this might be more of a problem than you might think, but even if your home's power is stable, well, let's say it's, it's always a good idea to always use protection. How electricity is delivered to you is actually a rather complicated matter, but in short, a power station normally generates it, sends it at an insanely high voltage to substations, think 400,000 volts, then that drops it, often in a few intermediary steps, uh, things like 132 kilovolts, then down to 11 kilovolts, before finally converting it down to 240 volts and into your home. The trick is that the power has to be generated instantly as it's needed. Too much demand and too little supply causes the voltage to drop, which can cause a fair number of problems, as can too much supply as that raises the voltage. The biggest issue is when you get things like lightning strikes on power lines or other issues that can cause surges and outages, both of which can lead to corrupted data and outright fried devices. So what can you do? Well, many of you probably already use a surge protected power strip. That is a great option as any even sort of tiny power surges can be sent to ground instead of into your PC, but it's far from perfect. It would be unable to help if say the electricity supply were suddenly cut, but that's where my newest purchase, an uninterruptible power supply or UPS, comes in. In essence, a UPS is fairly simple, at least there's a block diagram for it. It's just a battery that acts as sort of a, I guess, an intermediary, a backup of mains power and the power outputs, along with a, a bit of protection circuitry that gets thrown in there is what you use. To be specific, the Eaton Ellipse Eco unit that I boss is what's called an offline UPS. During normal use, the mains input is connected via protection circuitry to your tech. But if it detects a power loss, then the UPS will switch over almost instantly to battery power. The change is fast enough that any devices connected to it don't notice the switch and will continue to run even if all your lights have gone out. You can also get more high-tech options, including what's called a line interactive UPS. These can not only run off of the battery, but can also change the uh, sort of their output behavior based on the input voltage. So if the, the mains voltage is say unstable, let's say it drops uh, to a slightly lower voltage, the UPS can change how much current it draws to counteract that drop in voltage and therefore the connected devices are still none the wiser. This kind of protection is especially crucial for storage servers, which are more sensitive to power loss and, and sort of instability, as a hard shutdown, especially during a write operation, could mean a whole lot of problems like corrupted data or even corrupted file systems. For the average Joe, a UPS might be what you might call a touch overkill. That's why you see them in almost every server rack on the planet, but not so much in, in people's homes. With that said, if you do run a NAS or network attached storage device at home, or if you are in an area where your power is less stable, having a UPS hooked up to your PC, your NAS, whatever else, can be the difference between your components getting fried after just a, a few months of use or lasting a, well, the standard lifetime, as it were. The other key benefit is that the UPSs are often able to communicate with uh, a host system if the power is out. 
My Eaton unit uses USB and works with the Unraid UPS management tool that's native to Unraid, and it can report back to the NAS when the power has gone out, and if the battery level dips below uh, at least 10% is the, the default setting, it can tell the NAS to safely shut down rather than the alternative, which is it having lost power 30 minutes earlier. There are a few things that you should know about UPSs though, namely their capacity ratings. This is uh, somewhat uh, infuriating or frustrating as they essentially are using a, a marketing tool to make their numbers look bigger and it complicates things a whole lot. Basically, most UPSs are listed with a volt ampere or VA rating. That's not to be confused with watts, which is volts times amps. Volt amperes is volts times amps. Well, technically it's RMS or root mean squared voltage times RMS current to tell you the apparent power rather than watts, which is a measure of real power. I know, fantastic. Uh, that mostly comes with uh, the, the, the power factor, if you've heard of that, which is just watts over volt amperes. But for most electronics, watts is the more appropriate measure that you should be looking for. The size of the, the UPS that you buy determines a couple of things. First, if it can even support that kind of load at all. And second, for how long the battery backup can last for. I bought the top end 1600 volt ampere model, which is actually also rated at 1000 watts. Uh, and I picked that because uh, even while running both my Unraid NAS and my main desktop, I would expect that to have something like 20 to 30 minutes of runtime before they would need to shut down. Currently, with just the NAS connected, the dashboard reckons I have about 50 minutes of runtime should the power go out. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty happy with that. In short, buy the biggest size that you can for the most runtime you want, and also general capacity. Most gaming PCs, especially when idling, shouldn't be drawing more than about 100 watts. And even while gaming, the average gaming PC is only going to be drawing 300-400 watts at most from the wall. It's unlikely that runtime is going to be an important factor for a gaming PC, as much as just having a safe shutdown will. For me, the security and safety that it provides is the main benefit. And in theory, being able to keep working even if the power goes out is a nice close second. I spent around £300 on the, the Ellipse Eco unit, and while there are lower tier options that start at more like, I think, 150 I'm still pretty happy with that price as a very good peace of mind. If you would like to check out the uh, Ellipse Eco series that I purchased, then I will leave an Amazon affiliate link to that in the description down below. That is a global link that you can check out so you can see pricing when and where you watch this because, well, it can and does vary. There are also a number of other UPS vendors and a few different styles as well. I have the full standalone model, which uh, has the C13 or C14, I think it's C13 outputs, uh, which are the standard sort of Keta lead type style, and it technically is a special cable, uh, a cable that you're not going to find commonly, but you can buy even an Amazon Basics, uh, effectively just massive power strip, which has a lead acid battery inside, acts as a UPS. It's not a massive capacity, but it allows you to plug in standard plug sockets and is likely a better option for well, a lot of people. But with that said, I'll leave that there. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want to keep watching videos from me, I have a whole load on the channel you can check out, and you can also hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon to be notified of those new videos. There's also some videos on the end cards you can check out, and they pop up in, actually hopefully now, but maybe in a second. And uh, there's obviously plenty of links in the description if you want to support the channel and, and my, uh, my ramblings as well, so feel free to take a look. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.